I think I'm going to take Searing Blaze. Though I do have Scavenging News. I think my these two creatures are pretty important. Like scavenging just can just trade for Cackler or trade for War Driver or block command tokens. So yeah, I'm gonna take that. And I think let's see what we draw for the turn, but I might I might just actually play scavenging news next turn. Yeah, his hand's pretty good. My hand's nice too though. Sure. All right. So if I play the Ooze, I can block the War Driver. If I play the Mystic, I can play Obstinate Baloth next turn, which seems pretty strong. But I take five in the process. The real problem comes if I play Mystic and he kills it, then I just don't do anything for a while, which is pretty bad. Also, though, Scavenging News does eventually outclass these. Yeah, I'm just going to play the Mystic and try to get uh, Obstinate Baloth down next turn. I think that's I think that's a pretty noble – like if I get Obstinate Baloth down, then it just starts eating these things and it cushions my life total. Um, and if he uses his turn to kill Elvish Mystic, then – I'm not happy about it, but I can live with it. Again, I, I think that just playing for the later game makes sense here. We're still at 18. We're going to take a big hit here. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Goblin Rabble Master? Holy crap. And they're going to get Battle Cry? <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we're taking seven here instead of what I planned on. Wow, that was a really good draw for Randy. Huh. Abrupt decay, you say. I could just kill Rabble Master here. I feel like I need to play Baloth first, though. So I'm going to play Baloth first and then hope to be able to recover later with Oracle of Maldaya and, uh, or excuse me, Scavenging News and Abrupt Decay here. This is not a good spot to be in. At least this isn't a goblin. <laughs> Everything else is. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to try to block War Driver with Baloth or Rabble Master, depending on what he does. Yeah, Decay is a good draw. It lets me kill one of these two next turn um, while still playing a Scavenging News that turn, which is a very productive turn. These must attack. Yeah, he's just going to send the squad. So how big is this Rabble Master after all this? Because this is a goblin. Five power plus another extra from the thing. So if I block this, I take six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I take 13 and I go to two. Ugh. Yeah. I guess this is the play. That way I'm still at six, even though I'm in burn rage here. What was that? Cranko's command, right? And a figure. Wow, this draw from him has been insane. Oh, man. Pretty dead here. Not actual, but we're getting there. So I think I just play Scavenging Ooze, and then I have to kill the War Driver after blocks? Nah, we're just dying here. Yeah, I need a Damnation or something like that. All right. Well, he got us here, I think. No, if I kill War Driver before attacks, I am just dead. Because then I block here and I take one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm just dead either way. Opponent is Randy Bueller. Um, so we'll just see what he does here. I'm sure he's just going to ship the team in. All right. Uh, 
Um, what was there was one that I wanted to change. Was it Shriekma? Oh no, it's Wall of Roots. I want to bring in Wall of Roots and get rid of. Arbor Elf. Okay. That was a really good draw for Randy. Um, I thought we had a pretty good draw as well. Um, but yeah, he, he like getting that uh, Rabble Master was insane. Oh, awesome. I could bring in Shriekma. Hmm. I think this is a keep. This is one of our best cards against him and we can kill an early threat. So I am, uh, I am not in love, but I am going to keep it. Yeah, I think if we were on the play, we'd probably win. Uh, yeah, I'll play an elf. It's, it's pretty difficult for him to get a Grim Lava Mancer active in this format. In real modern, you can pretty easily because you can just go fetch, fetch. But in here, you get like one or two fetches in your deck at the most. Perfect. It ate a lightning bolt. That's not a problem at all. Would love to see a courser here. You know, that's the kind of thing I want to see. All right, Doomblade can kill Lava Mancer. Oh, Inquisition. That's pretty good too. Hopefully we can get a key three drop like that Rabble Master from last time. Cargan Dragon Lord and Lightning Helix. Well, the good news is that's a pretty easy one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just take down this thing now. And ship it back to him. And then we're going to have Obstinate Baloth versus Rakdos Cackler and Lightning Helix. So, um, I did pick up some hate for this matchup like this. Or some love. Bang. Big Daddy. Doesn't have white mana yet. But even then I would trade... Cackler for, or I would trade Bayloth for Cackler and, uh, and Helix. It's not single elimination. Yeah, Tassiger could be good. I don't know. Thrag Daddy got taken ahead of me, unfortunately. Sam Black has it. I wanted it real bad, but he took it really early. Helix, and he's got something else to kill Baloth. All right, so we got like a three for one out of it, or maybe like a two for one. Uh, I'll take it. Now we just need to draw some action. It doesn't really matter what. Uh, yeah, I'll pulse that thing. We're not blocking it, and I don't want to take two, four, or six damage from it over the next few turns, so. Hopefully he doesn't draw one of his potent threats here. Of course he rips Ravel Master. Ugh. Must be nice. Ooh, is this good? I'm going to get back Obstinate Bayloth. <laughs> I don't think we can race Rabble Master, but it'll at least buy us a turn. Now I need to draw something huge. Grave Titan would be amazing, like anything. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't. And then bang, he just immediately does. And now we're going to take 100 here. Hopefully he's out of gas at least. It does look like that's the case. So let's get back Obstinate Bayloth. Gain four life. Attack. Gain four more life. And ship. We still can't race the, uh, the Rabble Master though. That's the problem. We actually need to find a creature. Doesn't 
I mean, if we draw some elves here, we're pretty dead. But one time. Dead next turn. Grave Titan. Courser. Lance. All right. Ooh, and there's Primal Command. Wow, this is going to be so close. All right, Elf. It's your day. This is going to be very, very close. If you can get this thing out of the way, we are four, six, ten. We're actually still alive thanks to that elf hitting. <laughs> but we're going to draw Primal Command, which is going to gain us seven. And we're going to go get Grave Titan. Once we stick that, then it's, it's GG. But I'm going to block the Rabble Master here. Okay, this helps. All right, so I think what we want to do here... <sighs> gain seven life. So gain seven life. Search our library for Grave Titan, reveal it, and put it in our hand. The other thing I could do is not gain seven life. I could just get Grave Titan and put like uh, one of his lands on top of his library. And that means that – like I'm assuming that the last card in his hand is nothing. So that means that we for sure take four damage from the goblins. But then I for sure get to play Grave Titan. Because as it sits, if you find something that does five damage, you can kill us. Hmm. I think the seven life outweighs any of his individual top decks outside of like a couple of cards. So I think I'm going to do that. So that puts us up to 16. And it should close the door. I don't think there's any three drops we'd want to get here. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure there's nothing that I might want instead. Ooze doesn't do it. No, it's, it's just Grave Titan. The big gravy train. All right. I didn't have enough mana to whip back the uh, courser that turn. So here we go. Take four, go to 12. He's got to come up with a heck of a lot of damage here. Okay, here is 10 power of lifelink. And we even have a go for the throat now. So I think we're getting there. I'm playing against Randy Bueller. Suspension field. All right, so do I go for the throat, my own Grave Titan here? I think the answer is yes. I think I go for the throat, my Grave Titan, so that I can get it back with Whip. I think that's just better than letting him get it under the field, even though I have answers to Suspension Field. If I Whip back, like if I Brick next turn and don't draw anything, I can Whip back Grave Titan, gain a ton of life, and get two more Zombies. Yeah, see, because this is why you make that play. Oh, yeah, baby. Gravy Train keeps on rolling. Boom. You bet I'm attacking with everybody. Oh, yeah, four more zombies. You bet. These cards were just never meant to be used together. <laughs> but we're doing it, and I love it. Grave Dad, all aboard. Gravy Train incoming. Okay. 
Dragon Fodder Resolves. All right. Let's get back Courser. Maybe we'll even get lucky. Now it's Thrun, but we do get to gain an extra land from this. So now he's going to have to go double block, double block, double block, double block. And then he dies anyway. Two, four, six. Yeah, he's just dead. Yeah, you bet. It's fun to stream. I'm, I'm enjoying it for sure. Um, I didn't hold my land because bluffing against an opponent with one card doesn't matter. And because I gained a life from my core serve crew fix. Also, I've got huge plays in my deck, and I might want to be able to play one and activate whip in the turn, and being mana efficient is more important than um, withholding information when you're playing against a deck like Randy's. Randy's hands are tied. He, he, he doesn't have choices. So if I draw something, I'm going to play it. And if I don't, it's not like he can be like, well, I'm not going to attack because Marshall might have removal. No, he's just going to run in there because he has to. So it's better just to get the value while it's there. All right, you die. All right, we did it. Okay, so we did that. I don't know what happens now. I think hey, I don't actually know what happens now. So we'll we'll have to see. Excuse me, I've got to answer a text here. Huh. All right, we're back. Does Randy stream? Yeah, um, he doesn't stream his own games, but he, um, you know, he does the VSL, the Vintage Super League. I never miss that on every Tuesday. He's uh, going to fire up the Standard Super League coming up pretty soon as well. Um, he streams all of that stuff. Uh, I can put on somebody else's match. Sure. Uh, it looks like this is the only other one running. Oh, thank you. And of course you can. I don't know if Sam won. Uh, yeah, Sam 3 0 Obviously. Would you rather draft a monocolor deck in Dragon's Dragon's Fate or a five-color deck? I'd rather draft a five-color deck. Would I play in VSL? No. Um, I am still learning vintage. I have a couple of decks built on Magic Online, but those guys would absolutely wreck me. Limited Super League. I like that idea. Hey, you know, it could happen. I mean, Randy's, you know, kind of building out this programming and, you know, one thing at a time. Hey, Asteriel. But we'll see. Oh, Emrakul off the hideaway land. That's nasty. Who's my worst matchup? I don't know. Probably just Sam because he's the best player. Like he's just, you know, orders of magnitudes better at magic than most of us. Cause he's a, you know, full-time platinum professional player. And, uh, that probably just gives him an edge anyway. David's here. Yes. Now we can start. Impact Tremors. Um, not a lot. Yeah, it looks like um, it looks like BDM's deck is going off here. Yeah, I don't know if Sam's deck is the best. It might be, but he's definitely the best player. Sam Black. Okay, this match is done. Now, I don't actually know what happens now. Uh, 
Oh, okay. So Sam – so the way this works is that Sam gets to pick who he wants to play. Uh, he also gets to be on the player of the draw. So Sam will look at what he think who, – who, whose deck he thinks his matches up the best against and then play against that player. I've never actually done one like this before. But I guess we're cutting to the top four now, which I think we're in. No, that was the match. So the top four is Sam Black, Adam Prozac, us, and BDM's deck in the hands of Josh Monks. We call him War Monks. That's his nickname. Oh, thank you. And of course you can. How many rounds do I get to play? I don't know. I, I don't I think there's just four left, so I think it just goes two, one, and then that's it. So Sam's taking a look at what people drafted right now. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm looking at the Skype chat and they're kind of giving each other trash. Hey, Efro. Um, I went 2-1. I just beat Randy and I beat BDM stack and I lost to Adam Prozac. And uh, so we're in the playoff now with Sam Black, Adam Prozac, and BDM. Although BDM's not actually playing the deck. It's uh, Josh Monks. I don't know if Shotgun Lotus is still doing those drafts. Um, I haven't heard anything about them for quite a while now. Um, they, they were doing them pretty regularly. Uh, and then they kind of moved it over to Randy's thing. But now I think that they're not doing that the VSL stuff with Randy. So I, I don't know. You got like a C Sam's thinking. So what's happening now is Sam is, since he had the best record, he gets to decide who he wants to play of the four people that are left. So he gets to just choose his opponent. So he's going to look at the decks and see what he thinks is the best matchup for his. And then he's going to pick that opponent. Then the other two players are going to play each other and then, you know, the winners will play each other for the, for the thing. Um, yeah, he might, I mean, Sam, Sam knows what his deck is doing better than, than anybody. So, you know, let's see, he can play against Prozac, which can go, who can go over the top of him. Um, but I can too. I don't think he wants to play against a Splinter Twin deck just because he doesn't have that much removal or interaction. So I think that Sam uh, probably wants to avoid that deck. If that's the case, then it would leave it to me or Adam. And like you said, whichever one Sam thinks he has a better matchup against is who he'd choose there. So also, Sam gets to be on the play no matter what, um, even though, you know, Magic Online doesn't really allow that. We'll, we'll just ask him. He, you know, he'll just say, I wanted to be this on the play. So. <coughs> excuse me sorry so he'll he'll do that uh he'll get to choose whether he's on the player draw so he if you're the guy then he gets to you know he he gets like he gets to choose his opponent from the other three and be on the play it's a big advantage the top four is sam black us adam prozac and then um josh monks who is piloting bdm's deck the uh the red white splinter twin deck that's splashing for blue. Sam says he's still thinking so. Uh, and it looks like he took. Okay, he's going to play Adam. So we're going to, we got a rematch here. Against um, 
against BDM stack. Which I think is a good matchup for us. I I think so. Um, but he does have the ability to just combo off on us out of nowhere too. All right, so let's see if we can do some some sweet stuff here. Yeah, this looks nice. I'm going to keep this hand. Um, I'm going to just play a, a elf here, I think. And then next turn I can play elf and Thoughtseize and try to set up for some of our bigger plays later. Yeah, I think I actually think you're right, Knight. I think that I don't think Sam's afraid to play us. I think that he thinks that we have a better chance of knocking out this deck, and I think he doesn't want to play against this deck. I mean, because Sam gets to effectively set the bracket, you realize, right? Like it's not just that he gets to play who he plays against. He's effectively saying, I want those players to play against each other as well. So it's it's pretty sweet for him. All right, so let's thought season and see what our opponent's up to here. He's got six cards in his hand. All right, he's got, ooh, God's Willing, Idyllic Tutor, Kiki Jiki. He's got Kiki Jiki with Planes Planes, so I think we're going to let him hold on to Kiki Jiki here. Spellskite, Oblivion Ring, he can tutor up whatever, but we don't care, and a God's Willing. So it's either Oblivion Ring or Spellskite, I think. Oblivion Ring against Grave Titan. Like, let's say that we get up to Grave Titan, Range Oblivion Ring's just okay. Spellskite is annoying. No offense to your deck, but if you win here, I think Sam is well. I think Sam's just likely to win the thing. I, he's the best player in in the whole tournament by a lot. So I I think that just taking Sam in the dark, I would do that. Um, I think I'm going to take Spellskite. Though it doesn't really do anything here. I feel like down the line it certainly could. Maybe I just take Oblivion Ring. Oblivion Ring can take out Grave Titan. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to take the Oblivion Ring here. Like, my hand against... It, I don't think cares about Spellskite that much, especially because, like, he's got to pay extra to do it, and we're not really going to run him over with Elves. Like, I don't think that's really a plan that we want. Oh, Yeah. Well, now I wish I didn't take spell skite, but whatever. It's dead. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit a planes here, but he can redirect. Cost him a couple of life, but it'll save him a very critical land here. So, yeah, as it turned out, after having drawn acidic slime, I, I wish that we had the other, but so it goes. All right, now what is he gonna get? He just gets Splinter Twin. All right, well he drew a, a mountain, so that's good, but. Bang. Love Grave Titan. All right, so we kill him in like a turn or two here if he doesn't do anything. Get him to one. All right. Yeah, all aboard, man. I'm telling you, the gravy train, it, it does it stops for no one. Um, all right, so we want to go for the throat and duress along with abrupt decay. I think we want pulse, and I think we want putrefy. I think these are the cards that we want to bring in if, if we can fit them in. I think that makes sense. Um, so what can we cut though. I, I, we want all the hand disruption stuff I think that we can get our hands on. You know, Batter Skull is a card that's like mediocre against him. Like it's fine, but it's not amazing. I like Liliana. That we kind of wrecked him with Liliana. The sword is mediocre against him. It doesn't do much. I mean, I guess he is white. How much white removal did we see? 
he doesn't have the path. If he's got an oblivion ring, he can just take out the sword instead of the creature it's on. This is a lot of cards to bring in. Okay, I know I want this one and this one. These I can be talked out of maybe. I want the Doom Blade. I want the Night's Whisper. I just want to be able to, to get him. Maybe Scavenging Ooze comes out. He's not really doing much with the graveyard. Could take out Ugin or Karn. I think I'm just going to take out one of them and I'll take out the slower one. I mean, the card's great, but we have other ways to close out the game a bit sooner. I do feel like I want Go for the Throat, though. I mean, this is... This is, of course, you know, a, a potentially a combo deck. I'm going to take out the sword. It's not that it's not it doesn't pack enough of a punch, I think, to make it worth it here anyway. I hate cutting it in a in a deck with a bunch of elves. I just generally don't like that, but whatever. Okay, what do we got here? Turn one elf, turn two duress, and then we can try to wreck him with these fives. Yep, I'm in. Bad news. We got a decent hand. Oh, wrecked. <laughs> That's pretty good. I did not know he had mana tithe. I should know that because I've got the list, but eh, I guess I'd rather have that than, than get our duress nabbed. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not duressing. I'm positioning here. All right, Bonfire, Apostles' Blessing, Negate. None of these do anything. Negate does counter Batter Skull eventually, so I'll take Negate. And we'll probably duress away the Bonfire at some point here as well, though I don't think I need to do it this turn. Uh, but I will do it here. Because I want to be able to, to stick something here. So he's got Wrath of God, Oblivion Ring. Wow, those are two good draws for him. Um, so Wrath... Hmm, yeah, those are both decent answers to Whisperwood Elemental. I think I take Oblivion Ring and then just play Batter Skull next turn. Because if if I play Batter Skull, then the Wrath doesn't really do anything. Yeah, now I can play Llanowar Elf into uh, Whisperwood Elemental, which is pretty decent, for, even if he does have a Wrath. All right, so let's start Batter in here. All right, so now he's got Wrath Mana available, but he doesn't. he's not really incentivized to use it now. Remember, he knows our hand from before. Wow, this is actually getting pretty decent. Hmm. So this gets kind of interesting. Like, I can go Llanowar Elf Whisperwood... He wraths. I get to turn Llanowar Elf into something. Yeah, that doesn't really seem worth it. I'm just going to play the Elf here. This is a, a three-turn clock with the Elf. 5, 10, 15. So kind of put it on him to fire off that Wrath. Sidisi. Hello, friend. All right. Attack, attack.
Don't have any one mana removal, but I'm tempted to play Sidisi to get rid of the elf and then go get like a removal spell of some sort. He'll probably untap in Wrath. Hi, Kenji. Just don't want to get comboed out here. And if I use this turn to do Sidisi, yeah, I think I think I just wait still though. Like he really needs to find the combo like almost immediately to actually get me here. I do, I have a thought seize. Okay, that makes me feel better. Because now I don't just get randomly comboed off. So yeah, I'm just going to... He has to Wrath here now or else he's just dead. I can return Batter Skull if I want and I have options. All right, so there's Wrath. That happens. Do I want to return Batter Skull? I don't think so. I think I just go like... Uh, oops. Like Bird... which is lethal. He can't combo off here, right? No, there's no way. So I can tap down a bit. Play Whisperwood. And this way I have basically two lethal threats. I can equip the Batter Skull to the bird, and also I'll have just the Whisperwood Elemental itself. And this way I just sort of diversify my threats out a little bit, I think. Oh, <laughs> oh, baby, that's going to sting. That is going to put a bit of a sting on our opponent here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to attack with both of these. He needs to kill both, deal with and or kill both. Got a pester mite. That taps down Whisperwood. Oh shoot, it didn't it didn't pause for me. Alright, well we'll just see if he wants to I wanted to get the zombies, you know, I wanted to flip it up beforehand, but Eh, yeah, this is a little sloppy. I actually didn't think he was going to block. Don't think it matters a whole lot, but um, I assumed that he would have to try to combo off if he was going to try to win the game. The good news is I have go for the throat backup plan either way. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised he blocked. He's got Kiki Jiki in his hand. Oh, okay, this is why. All right, so we just kill this thing before he has a chance to. Or actually, doesn't he have Apostle's Blessing? Yeah, he does. Okay, this is going to be close. Um, he can kill us here, but he needs a, another red mana source. Oh, baby. We got a real game here. He only has one turn to find it. Huh. So that's what it was. He had the backup plan. Huh. Yeah, I did not see things unfolding like this. There's that thought seize. Does he have the mountain? No mountain. Don't do it. He says he punted. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. All 
No, I don't think I should have Sidisi thought seized. That was one possible line, but there's a lot, a lot of times when we just kill him here uh, on the spot. Like the thing is, he has to have two different combo pieces and Apostles Blessing. We know he has Apostles Blessing, but not the other ones. All right, so we got him. So we win that. And let's see what's going on in this match. Well, this doesn't look good for Sam Black. <laughs> Oh my god. He's getting destroyed. Adam Prozac just wrecking with Elspeth. He destroyed us with Elspeth. So our deck is all green black, right? And when we played him earlier. And he goes, uh, what's it called? Um, Mirren Crusader, <laughs> which we do not have a lot to touch. And then he plays Elspeth and throws it in the air and tends us. And it's just like, you're dead in a turn. <laughs> we had nothing going on. Like we were going to cast a Grave Titan a turn or two ahead of time, but it was like laughably slow. Uh, yes, I will be posting this um, broadcast to the Limited Resources YouTube channel. So you can find it there. That was the semifinals for us. This is for them. You bet. Yep. I'll, I'll put a tweet up to it on there to uh, show you, show you when that thing goes up. I put up the, um, what's it called? The, the draft from the dragons of Tarkir preview draft up there. And it's a little clunky to get it from Twitch to there. It's not quite as clean as I'd like, but it works. What is happening here? Engineered explosives on three. And he's floated two mana as well. So that's going to take care of the sword only. Well, that's still pretty good, I guess. But the leftover wolf is going to be pretty annoying for, uh, for Sam because that thing's going to hit him for five a turn with Elspeth. Uh, and he's also got a creeping tar pit that he can't activate yet. Mm. Nope. Spoke too soon. <laughs> so now he takes eight a turn and Adam kills him in two turns unless Sam can come up with something. So that's five in the air plus tar pit activation is eight. And he's going to kill Sam next turn unless Sam either kills Elspeth, which is tough. Yeah, Sam has a lot of work to do. Casting a primeval Titan is not going to be good enough here. Uh, in their graveyards. Well, uh, Sam just played Bajuka Bog, which wiped out Adam's graveyard. So he's got three cards in exile. Uh, for Sam, he's got Primeval Titan, Stomp Howler, Through the Breach, Summoning Trap, Serum Visions, Rampant Growth. So yeah, he's got some stuff. Through the Breach is one of the ways that he could wipe the board. You know, he could um, he could have played Emrakul from his hand for, you know, cheap slash free. All right, Adam won that game. I don't know what game that was, though. I'm going to uh, hit the restroom real quick. Well, actually, I'll, I'll wait a minute. I'll wait until their match is back up again so that you guys can have something to do while I'm gone for a minute. Now... Uh, what are you guys talking about? Uh, lost because Marshall could have gone for Kiki's throat. It's game two. Oh, Murderous Cut's not bad in this format. It's 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 okay. Um, 
I think you could definitely make a case for me having it in my deck. But I decided to take the uh, the super cheap spells. So here's the deal. You play a card like Murderous Cut in, in Modern Rotisserie, and what happens is you face Randy. And he's got a 2-2 two, two for 1 that you need to kill on turn 2 or turn 1. Um, Murderous Cut later in the game ends up being 1 mana kill anything, which is fantastic. It really is. The card has its role. But I decided to hedge over instead towards the 2 mana removal spells because I figured that the decks would be a little bit more fair and I'd rather have a quick answer as opposed to one that would be good later. So that was that was what, what I was thinking. Looks like they're still sideboarding here. Yep, Elspeth is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unlimited, unlimited. And it's still good. I like I said, I'm not saying it's bad. Uh, I'd just probably run Cutthroat and Doomblade. Yeah, that's fair. What cam software am I using? Um, I'm using um, OBS, which they have a Mac client for, and it's great. It's super simple. There's not much to it, but it didn't take me long to get set up, and it works really well. I just hit the button, and it goes. Um, obviously, I don't have a fancy overlay or whatever, but like I can get my little logo down there and the stuff, and, and it really works well. Uh, this, is, this is limited, kind of. Th this is a... I don't think Toxic Deluge is legal in modern. I would have played I would have played it if it if it was. Yeah, it's only it's it's legacy. You can play it in legacy. But. They're in game. What's Toxic Deluge? That is Toxic Deluge. It is fantastic. It's a great card. I love that card in cube. What this rotisserie format is, sure. So this format, rotisserie is when you draft the booster packs face up. So you, you lay them out on a table so everybody can see them, and then each person takes one in, in order. So you know what colors your opponents are playing. But instead of using regular booster packs for this, we used modern, the format. And so this is what the draft looked like. It is not a new thing. It's actually a very old thing. Um, and if you look at this, sh the spreadsheet, this is how we drafted because, you know, if you go over this list, it's like, I'm from Seattle. Chris is from Philadelphia area. I think uh, Randy's in over in Bellevue. There's Seattle, Seattle, Rashad's in Chicago. Sam lives in uh, Wisconsin and, and BDMs over in New York. So you can't really get together and do it. So what we did is this is the round number over here. And then if you look, it tracks to the right and then it comes down and then goes back to the left. And that's the order of picks that everybody had. So like, if you look at my first pick, I first picked batter skull cause I wanted a colorless card to stay open. And then it went noble hierarch, lightning bolt path, snapcaster glimpse, the unthinkable from Rashad. Cause he's crazy. Worm coil, splinter twin, kiki jiki. So splinter twin, kiki jiki in a row for Brian. And then it went Shell Dock Isle, Hedron Crab, Vendillion Click, Resto, Goblin Guide, Temple Garden. And then when I got back to me, I realized that all the black cards were good. So I took Lilian, Lilian of the Veil and Thoughtseize back to back. And then I moved in on green black after that. I'll put this link so you guys can check it out if you want in on your own computer. It's a little easier to, to view there. Uh, and also, what is going on with this? Did something happen? Yeah, something happened. All right. So let me... There we go. And it looks like the remnants of a Hornet Queen from Through the Breach have been left over. I'm going to go hit the restroom real quick, but you guys can watch this match.
did I miss? What did I miss? Who's winning? I tweeted again just in case anybody wanted to come watch it. But what's happening here? Who's winning? Alternative draft formats. Yeah, that was a sweet one. One of Brian's favorites as well. He he relishes in the uh, in the weird formats. <laughs> so what happened here? Stompaller took down a sword. A bunch of bugs took down Ashiok. And Sam is smashing face, it looks like. <laughs> Would Blue Black Mill be a good choice? Well, you can ask yourself that question if you're Rashad Miller, because that's exactly what he drafted. In fact, yes, I think it could be. I sketched out the deck before we did it to see. And the the problem is that it goes down really fast. Um, so you get like your Glistener Elf and your, um, what's it called, uh, Blighted Agent and those type of cards really quickly. And then you find that you've got to be three colors because you need black for like Plague Stingers and stuff. And if you want to get Critical Mass, you run out really quick. Um, so I do think it's viable. I think it's definitely a deck you could play. But it is not as strong as it is in regular modern, not by a long shot. So let's see what Adam can do to try to get out of this. I don't actually know what the match count is. Ooh, Consecrated Sphinx. That's a nice one. That blocks the Indrik Stomp Howler. Uh, but Adam is going to need to find a way to deal with infinite bugs here because... Those are going to get him. Um, he's going to be able to outcard Sam. I don't know if Sam has the ability to interact with Consecrated Sphinx, so he might be able to just bury him. But he needs a pretty specific answer. Sam's already got an active Shell Dock Isle, and, uh, and he just got back Hornet Queen with his Eternal Witness, which he's got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's got tons of mana, so he can he can absolutely cast it too. So this, uh, 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 don't say it's Emrakul. Oh, it's compulsive research. <laughs> Sam's deck is so scary because he has Emrakul in it. <laughs> it's really like always just this threat. Whoa, compulsive research consecrated Sphinx. <laughs> I didn't realize it said draw three. It does. Look, target player draws three cards. It's such a subtle distinction between like looking at the top three or putting the top three in your hand. It's like, but if it says draw, you're going off. And right now, Prozac has 13 cards in hand. Emrakul's gone under Ashiok. Ah, I see. Yep, there he is right there. Whoop. Spaghetti monster down. All right, that's good to know. Thanks for that. Poor Emrakul. So it looks like it's going to have to be a bug fight here. Does Sam not have enough green mana to cast the uh, tight the thing? Ooh, Worm Coil. Wow. This is a sick game. Prozac just needs to have the tools in his deck somewhere because he's going to draw them. So he needs to stay alive and find... The answers to these different types of threat that threats that Sam's producing, like, you know, multiple death touch insects, and then he's going to be able to recast that thing at some point. I think he can charge up this ice bridge, right? No, it's already gone. So one, so Sam's stuck on two green mana sources. That's what's going on here. This is really funny.
What is it? What does Prozac have? Bane Slayer. Dang. That's super sweet. And a Signet. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's got seven mana because we know he's playing Iona. So he might just be looking to hard cast Iona, but he needs another white source and he also needs two more mana. But this is sweet game. Very commandery, yeah. Ooh, Iona just hit the bin. So that means that he's going to reanimate it next turn. And Baneslayer is going to do a darn good job of holding back the force here because worm coil can come in, but he can just chump block that or whatever. Like he's not really worried about it. And any other attacks aren't worth it because Bane Slayer just wrecks you coalition relic. All right. That's the green that Sam needed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So he can actually just play Hornet queen here. Green, 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 white, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Wouldn't be shocked to see Adam chump block with mold drifter at some point here. He's got 13. He has a little life to spare, but he doesn't want to get low. Yeah, Muldrifter's going to jump in front of the Worm Coil here. Oh, wow. Huh. Is Baneslayer Angel going to hold off eight insects and a <laughs> thing and, and two Worm Coil tokens and a Witness and a 4-4 all by itself? This is insane. Rashad did not do well. I think he 0 3 Okay, so here it is. Hornet Queen. Bzzz. Buzz buzz. But I'm sure I'm pretty sure we're gonna see Iona on the battlefield now. I think he's going to unburial rights, Iona, Shield of Ameria, probably named Green. No, he's going to wrath. Oh, my God. He's going to totally wrath him. So savage. It's going to kill everything on the battlefield, all of them. And Sam figures, well, just in case he doesn't have it, I might as well get rid of Bane Slayer here does not have protection from bees uh it's day of judgment I think right isn't that what the one that Adam has let's see here Adam is here in the middle and he's got day of judgment so the day has come lest you be judged and uh, Adam's gonna have to just settle for a 10 card hand versus a two card hand is now what wrath does yes it, it kills everything. Zealous persecution? No, no, he can't attack though. Like what if Sam just says, sure. Then he takes like a good hit on the backswing. He takes three, six, nine, ten. He takes ten damage coming back. And sure, he gets to kill some stuff, but whatever. All right, so here's Day Crunch. Any follow-up? Maybe a Planeswalker? Iona! Oh my god! <laughs> Adam Prozac, everybody. This guy's insane. Wow. And he named Green. That shuts off most of Sam's deck. Most of his, I think most slash all of his payoff cards are green. Uh, how does this work? So this actually lets you cast it for free, right? You can play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. I think this actually prevents that. Can't cast spells. Is playing the spell the same as casting it? I always forget. I don't actually know the answer. Hello there. He gets the rights back Bane Slayer. Yeah, this, this is nuts. That's a sweet line there from Prozac. And he's going to close out the game pretty quick with a 7-7 flyer also. So that's nice. Play equals cast are the same thing. So he can't actually do it. He can't activate Sheldock Isle. Sick. Yeah, this is just too good.
Oh, okay. All right. Did you get anything? No. Well, I'm, I'm on the stream, but... No, I didn't get anything because you didn't reply. Oh, okay. Um, or now I can get something else. What do you want to get? I don't know. I'm just hungry and I didn't want to come home for food and you'd be like, what do you think? No, I had to go get it. I'm, I'm independent. Revoker. Yeah, this is just... Holy crap, Skuller took Inferno Titan too. Yeah, this is just insane. Hi, thank you. Oh, bummer. I'm going to put a copy of this up on YouTube though. If, so if you have to go, that's okay. But it'll be up there later so you can watch it. Um, I got another match to play. So I'll take something, sure. Wherever you're going, just you know what I like. Mm. Is else? Not open. Too far. No, it, doesn't sound it doesn't sound good. All right, that's fine. Nineteen. So I'm waiting for the finals. Glenelendra Archmage can chump lock a couple times, but Sam's hellbent now. Yeah, this thing's done. James says hi. James. Oh, he's on here. He's watching, yeah. <laughs> they, say, they say you're famous. Why am I famous? Mm -hmm. It is her, yeah. Uh, people are putting in orders. <laughs> what do they want? An extra large double double. Double double? Yeah, I don't know what game this is. That's the thing I'm confused about. I think this is game three. Does it say? Game number, one on one, it doesn't really say. A double doubles from in and out? Yeah. Seven, ten, fifteen, seven. That's game. That's it. This is game three. All right. Resto to get back tight hollow sculler. Just so it doesn't die. G G. Nobody's talking. I'm talking. Oh, you're just by yourself. Yeah, I'm just streaming me. I'm I'm gonna be playing my game in just a minute. I was just seeing. We we're just waiting for the final to come. Well, I thought you were doing it like all together or something. We are. All right, so that's it. That was insane. That was a sick game. <laughs> that was awesome. How will I play the rematch versus Adam? Well, I'm going to my first step is to hope that he doesn't have Mirren Crusader at any point. And then I will continue from there. Yeah, that was that was completely nuts. Adam Prozac just crushing. We actually we actually had a close one with him where we beat him pretty handily in the first game and then got smashed in the second. And then in the third, I thought we had stabilized when we played Ugin and wiped the board, but he just immediately presented like two extra lethal threats beyond the one that he already had, and we could only deal with one thing. So we got beat up there. I'm waiting to see if Adam's ready to play. Can I amend the deck between rounds? No. I don't have an 18th pick. No, it just got deleted somehow. You guys can see the deck here. This is the deck.
<laughs> Thank you. Have fun at work. In Europe. People are in Europe, too. Oh, right. Thank you. I probably need the luck. I think Adam's deck is pretty insane. I definitely like it. Don't really know what's going on, though, because I should be playing against him in the finals, but he... I offered to set up the game, but he hasn't answered, so I'm just going to wait. Maybe he he ran off to use the bathroom or something like that. No Jace. For, I could have used whatever Usman, but I don't know. The old one seems sweet. <laughs> Believe me, I wish I had fetches as well. But they're also good just for value. Like They're better with fetches, but there's only so many fetches to go around. Yeah, one last stop for the gravy train, and it's Adam Prozac's house. We're going to be pulling up to the front yard and blowing the horn and waking him up in the middle of the night, hopefully. Uh, I haven't done any radio stuff outside of Magic. Just, the, well, the podcast, but, you know, that doesn't count. I think the sword's pretty good in this deck, actually, Ryan. Um <clears throat> It's like the the problem is you, you get draws sometimes where you draw two elves or whatever and then, you know, you play your first big threat and then they deal with it. And having a sword laying around to equip to elves to make them real cards again is a big deal. It's it, it really helps. Um, it really helps mitigate th the problem of running elves. It's also why I'm running Sidisi in the main deck. Because I want the ability, this Sidisi, I mean, because I want the ability to play Sidisi and sack a random elf or a creature from Bitter Blossom Token or something that just doesn't really matter. Um, I, also, b sort of Light and Shadow plus Bitter Blossom is a nice combo, too. It's pretty tough to race that. Mirror Crusader is ahead of the gravy train putting pennies on the rail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is that is very true. <clears throat> um, I still play poker. I, I don't, I guess I don't have to at this point, like technically, but it's better for me financially if I do. So, so I do. Uh, no, this is the – Ryan, the, the sword that I got was actually the last available sword. Um, they kind of went in a flurry. Uh, I, I I took I, – I decided to pick it up at the last moment. <clears throat> um, so you can see how they're kind of grouped up here. So it came back around this way. Oh, this isn't right. Yeah, this got screwed up, I think. But anyway, I ended up taking a sword because I wanted one in the deck. Whack-a-mole. <laughs> Do they, they, uh, they, yeah, I, I get, I get paid per video for CFB. Have I seen rounders? <laughs> yes. Yes, I have I have seen rounders many, many times. All right, looks like Prozac is back, so we'll be we'll be ready to rumble here in just a moment. A lot of interesting chatter. And now that we've actually got to play games, people are starting to figure out some of the things that 
you know, maybe I should have taken, I shouldn't have taken, where my deck ended up, um, what to prioritize and that kind of thing. Yeah, I agree, Ryan. I'm not actually a huge fan of the swords myself, um, but I think this one matters. Also, I'm playing Thoughtseize and Bitter Blossom, cards like that where incidental life loss does tend to add up and getting that life back can really be a big deal. So, all right, it is time for the finals. So let's get in there and see if we can't beat up Adam. Um, so the first thing to look out for when we're playing here is if he, if he has Mirror and Crusader uh, and we don't have an answer. Um, if he has a mirror and crusader, we could be in trouble. I'm going to keep this hand. This looks just fine to me. We've got card draw. We've got action. We can kill an early threat. Yeah, I don't think I needed a first pick shell dock. I, I did kind of want it, but, um, I wanted to stay as open as I could since I had first, like literal first pick. I don't know. What would you guys take? Like th that's the thing is that we had this big discussion when we were at dinner and figured out, and we were trying to figure out, you know, what it is that we should be, um, picking and, you know, everybody had their own thing. But then when we decided to actually do this, I ended up with the, the literal first pick and I'm like, uh, what do I do with this? <laughs> Cause I couldn't figure it out. I'm just like, th this is really, really difficult, you know? And so I don't know. I, I, I ended up deciding to take a, a uh, colorless card. I decided to take uh batter skull over worm coil engine. Those were kind of the two that had caught my eye, but yeah, who knows? All right. I'm going to go ahead and attack here. I'm going to, I'm going to tempt Adam into, into blocking with his muta vault. <laughs> Somehow he didn't fall for it. Uh, so bummer. All right. No ramp this game, but good cards. We've got Doomblade, Slimeball, Sidisi, which isn't really doing much. We really needed an elf at some point, but Slimer killing this thing is going to be pretty good. Can I eat this? Nom nom. I don't know if that does anything, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, yeah. So our curve is amazing, kind of. But it doesn't start till next turn. So we really just wanted one, any one of these cards to be an elf. This game, uh, that would put us in a nearly perfect spot because we could get our best cards with Sidisi. Though I, I will say that we've already kind of drawn our best cards, so it's like not that big of a deal. Yeah, obviously. Um, all right, I'm just going to slime ball creeping tar pit, but I'm going to attack first. I think I would trade my scavenging ooze for creeping tar pit. And if he activated muta vault, I would just kill it. Uh, resto. Okay. Well, this turn is going to be doom blading a restoration angel. Eating the restoration angel. And then playing an elf. Which I suppose is fine. This sets us up to ride on, that's right, the gravy train next turn. Uh, seriously considering acidic sliming the godless shrine, though, because that takes him off of wrath. Ashiok? Hmm. That is annoying. Ooh, he just hit Whisperwood. Now we have to actually dedicate some resources over there. What else did he hit? He also hit Forest Forest, which is okay, I think. Oh, now I'm going to slime that. Yeah, I can hit hit Ashiok for four and still slime ball. That seems quite good. Yeah, I'm going to take out the Chancery here. It's like hitting two lands. I don't want to attack Ashiok here, but I think it is correct to do so.
I could t- I could attack Ashiok for one and just try to keep him off of Whisperwood, but then I would have to do it next turn anyway. Now I get to kill Ashiok here, probably. Bitter Blossom. All right, so things are rolling now. I've got two, four, five, six. I've got seven mana. I can just slam Karn and take out a land here. I could... S- yeah, that seems good. Like, I send Scavenging Ooze over to Ashiok, Acidic Slime at opponent, and then I slam Karn and hit a land. I think that's what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to just wrestle control here. Uh, we can see what else Ashiok exiled. Um, Lilian of the Veil, Thoughtseize, and Garrick Relentless. So let's see if he's got a removal spell here. No? All right. And I'm going to take out the tar pit. Because that's a thing that can threaten Karn. It doesn't take him off of maximum lands, but it does threaten Karn the most. All right. Smashed him. Karnfather. Hello. We didn't even need to play the gravy train. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Um, we like Shriek Ma, right? That seems good. I like Maelstrom Pulse. I think those two should come in. I think that Go for the Throat might be worth it too, and I think Damnation could be as well. Uh, these other ones I'm less excited about. Yeah, I thought about killing a blocker first, but it, it didn't actually make sense because if he wanted to block, I'm happy with that. Like that just makes my my life even better. Um, yeah, exactly, Willie. We we actually want that to happen. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's interesting. I wonder if Primal Command is good against the Balanced Lands. He might be taking them out. Like. When you get slime balled, you're just like, ugh, you know? I think I'd rather be more proactive. Um, so I like Sword against him because it does have protection from a lot of his creatures. Scavenging News is really important against him. I think Liliana of the Veil vale is not that good. I think I'd rather have Damnation. I want Shriek Ma. I want my big stuff though. That's the thing is that I actually do want the big stuff here. Like th this is not an easy one because my main deck's pretty well good. Yeah, Damnation for Crusader, exactly. And Karn and Ugin for Crusader, but that's usually too slow. The good news is we have cards like Batter Skull and Grave Titan that can race it and, or at least hold it back, which is pretty good. I feel like I want Go for the Throat though. These things are all just straight up one for one removal spell with our opponent's stuff, and that's pretty good. But maybe I just want Pulse instead of that because I can actually kill a Planeswalker with it, and I've already got Shriek Ma and Doomblade sitting here too. Yeah, Lily's still not good against him, though. It, it might get a, a Crusader, but it also uh, might not, you know? I think I'm going to cut an elf. I'm not going to completely reconfigure the deck, but I think I do want to be a little bit lighter on Elves with Damnation in the deck. All right, I'm going to try this build, and we'll see how this goes. Yeah, Lily Plus puts reanimation targets in his yard, and he also is the one that ended up with Lingering Souls. So Liliana against this opponent is actually quite bad. Yeah, I mean, Garrick's good. Look, I'm cutting a good card. There's just no other, you know, there's no way to put that. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is keepable. Inquisition something early and then hopefully catch up off of Oracle. It's not a great hand. I am going to keep it, though. We're also on the draw, so we get to see a couple of cards. 
Okay. So let's get any potential threats out of the way now. Talisman, aha, you monster. Got him. All right, stage one complete. Now we just need to find a Grave Titan <laughs> and a bunch of elves and mana. But lining up the gravy train would be sweet here. Castigate. All right, so he takes Oracle, or if he's worried about a long game, he'll take Batter Skull. I think Oracle is the more urgent threat, but Batter Skull is pretty good against him, and he might be worried about like just being able to beat it at all. So th this will be interesting. I'm really curious to see what he picks here. Yeah, he took Batter Skull. He he really was worried about Batter Skull. Oracle does some work for me, but. I, I don't blame him. I'm actually secretly a little happy, though, because we've got tons of threats in the deck, but not that many Oracle of Moldiah effects, so I'm happy about it. Here's a Talisman now. Oh, no, there's a Lingering Souls, right? And we're going to flood out a little bit here, but we will be able to play at least one extra land. All right. Flashing backings. Ooh, jeez. This isn't good. All right, well, he bricked, but it was now that was already gone. So it was Twilight Mire, Bitter Blossom, Swamp. All right, well, yeah, thanks for getting those out of the way at least as we draw more lands. Play an Oracle. Miss. And we're going to have a ton of lands, so now it's just up to the top of our deck to find us action. Unfortunately, Knight's Whisper would have been about the ideal top deck. Okay. Um, because it would have drawn us into more stuff like maybe this guy. But we still have decent draws. So, yeah, I think he's a favorite here because of what we've drawn, which is nothing. And he's got, you know, Ashiok going. So we're pretty far behind here. But, you know, if we can find Karn or something, we might be able to dig our way back out. And he's kind of firing on all cylinders here. Lance. So here's a bop. We know that's coming. There's a land. And there's a Doom Blade that we're not actually going to get to see. And yeah, I don't think I can really attack here either. So I think we're just going to end up losing this game. We've just simply not drawn spells. It, there's really no other way to put it. And now we're now we're drawing a Thought Seize, which isn't what we want to draw. We need our big stuff, you know. Abrupt Decay next game. Let's see. What does it hit? So it hits Ashiok. Or maybe a Signet? Yeah, that seems decent. Oh, good lord. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. Because we're drawing Thoughtseize. And then he's getting Tarmogoyf. Let's see what he brought in, or if we can get any data here. Gifts and some mana. All right, well, we'll take gifts. Play out the rest of our lands and ship it back. All right, well, we're going to have to win in game three here, it looks like. Yeah, I thought about Wheel of Sun and Moon against him. I don't know how good it is. Like, he's got one graveyard plan, but, like, it's not amazing, and it takes an entire card for us to try to shut that off. And I don't love that. So this is 4-7. I block here. I take 6. I go, I go to pretty much dead, and I'm drawing Goyf, so, yeah, I'm just dead here. He shouldn't even activate Ashiok. All right, I'm going to scoop that up because he has perfect information about what we're doing. All right, so some considerations were Abrupt Decay and Wheel of Sun and Moon. Hmm. Gosh, after seeing that Consecrated Sphinx as well, it does feel like go for the throat's uh, 
pretty nice tool to have. Though I do have Shriek Mom, which does the job as well, although not nearly as good as Go for the Throat against that particular card. I think I'm actually just going to cut the Goyf. I want to be more of a control deck here, I think, with our big finishers. He doesn't really have a way to stop us from, though. Yeah, Primal Command is, like, interesting. I don't think it's great, but it could be decent. I could shuffle away his yard. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like that potent to me. All right, this looks like a keep. Uh, we get to play Bitter Blossom on turn two, um, which is already a good clock. And, a you know, I'm assuming pretty tough for him to deal with. And then, you know, we're green mana away from having birds into Whisperwood and all that. And there's our birds. But I'm just going to slam Blossom here. And we'll see if Bitter Blossom can get the job done. No, Disenchant. Okay, well, we got a game. And we have Whisperwood Elemental next turn, which I like. I think that's really good. Oh, where's my Acidic Slime? I want to get this guy so bad. Where's my Acidic Slime? Scavenging news. All right. Well, I will settle. Four, one of the better fives around. He is the one with path? No, I think he is, but he doesn't have it, obviously. Castigate. Ugh. Well, the good news is we have a pretty good hand and a really good board. So even though he's castigating and taking away Ugin here, we still have a scavenging news that we can use as a follow-up play. I'm not going to play it yet. I don't think that there's a big reason to here because Whisperwood should be able to take over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wrong ooze. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so that goes away, and he has oust. Okay, well, he's doing a good job of keeping us at bay. But that thing will be back. Ah, oh, we did it! The slime ball has arrived! Yes, yes, yes. Get you! <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy. You're only one turn late. Slime time. Welcome. Okay, there's a sword, and then here comes Whisperwood again. Yeah, this is all this is all happening. This is all a thing. I think if he wraths were fine, we get two manifests out of the deal. So I don't think I'm gonna play around that by not playing Whisperwood because we get th this manifest no matter what, which is I okay. If he wraths, we sack and then the slime and the bird become threats. Oh, he's missing his land drop. We could be closing in. Uh, these are neither of these are creatures, right? Yeah. He could have, I don't even know what he could have. Nothing. Crunch. go yes and now even if he has wrath yeah the train has arrived everybody all aboard we did it we are the champions all right that's sweet we won that's awesome i'll bring up the deck again for anybody that might be doing one of these this is a strategy you might want to consider. I think there's other really good ones, but the gravy train does not stop for anybody. And we got there. So that was fun. Yes, I high five the whole chat. Everybody, game. Yeah, that was sweet. Um, so to summarize, I think that you should do one of these modern rotisseries. Um, I've been putting the, the thing up here. The, sorry, this is the, uh, 
This is what they look like when you do them on a spreadsheet. It's really easy to set up. You can actually just copy ours, like just clear off all the stuff and change the names. And you can just copy ours. And they're really fun. Like you just, uh, you can do these with your friends. You don't even have to live near each other. You do need to be able to put together the decks either in real life if you're going to play against each other in real life or on Magic Online. So it does help if you have a bunch of cards on Magic Online or somebody does that they can at least loan them out to people. Because remember, it's Singleton. So like even if like if one person has the majority of Modern on their Magic Online account, then your whole group can turn friend. I don't know why Pick 18 is missing and I don't know where it went either. <laughs> you know, I, we can actually look it up. I, I put a picture of it on the blog after it was finished. Here it is. Oh no, it wasn't finished. It was only halfway done. <laughs> I have no idea what pick 18 was. And I, I think something got moved. Uh, anyway, I highly recommend trying one of these things out. They're super, super fun. And, uh, I, and I don't think that we figured out this format yet at all. Um, you know, people took different paths in ours. I took a more middle ground path because I wanted to have a good matchup against any of the decks that I saw, or at least a good enough matchup against any of the decks that I saw. But other people took a much more hard edge approach to it. Um, you know, you saw Sam went really deep with kind of a crazy, uh, you know, primeval Titan based deck. Um, Adam Prozac, you know, he, he went for a solid middle line, but with this random upside of having unburial rights, gifts ungiven package, you know, which just gives his deck some flexibility and awesomeness that he, that he wouldn't normally have. Um, you know, but like Pakula went for like a really, um, solid, consistent, um, green white deck that looked to be, you know, like pretty beat downy. Randy was the aggressive deck, just looking to put it in everybody's face. Aaron was the blue drafter. BDM went for a crazy build. He's white, red splinter twin, you know? So that's a, that's kind of a new thing. He's got some blue cards, but you know, his main, most of his deck is that. Um, and then I went with ramp rock, I guess is what you'd call it. So 18 was Sidisi. All right. I can fix that. There we go. We did it. So that was it. That was fun, guys. Um, I really had a good time hanging out with you too. Um, I'm certainly happy that you uh, that you guys were able to to join and hang out. That was really really fun, and uh, and I had a really good time uh, do it, riding the gravy train with you guys too. Um, <laughs> ooze tribal. <laughs> Uh, that's good. Oh, I might be recording another one for one this weekend. It's not a hundred percent confirmed, but my friend Woodrow, um, his brother's in town and his brother, um, is a, um, is a professional snowboarder and just like a super interesting dude. So I might, I might be able to do that. Uh Oh, it wasn't 36. Okay. Let me, I'll, I'll fix that. Let me erase that one. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks, Ryan Dunn. Yeah, I know I should stream more often. I always say I'm going to, but then I don't end up doing it um, just because, like, I don't know when when I should be doing it. I kind of make excuses, to be honest, sometimes. But, like, I find that I'll get home and then I'll feel like streaming at some certain time, but then other people are streaming. And I don't know if it's to the point now where it's just, like, whatever, like, just stream when other people are streaming. But like, if I come home and like Chion's on or Kenji's on, like, I don't want to get on and stream. I don't want to take listeners away from those guys. Like I, you know, like I really, and plus I like to watch their streams too. So that doesn't really make sense for me. Um, I was talking to Randy and BDM and the guys on coverage about it this week uh, when we were in Brussels. And one thing that did come up was that I'm often awake late. I stay up really late. And, um, so maybe I'll start streaming later at night. I, I assumed it wouldn't be good because, um, you know, people are asleep or whatever, but maybe it'll just be like me and the late night people and a bunch of the the Europeans or something, you know, that are up already. And, and that'll be the thing. Um, I don't know. And I, cause I like, I do enjoy doing it. It's really fun. I like it when it's something like this with a whole bunch of people and we kind of hyped it up and we had a good time with it. But one of the other issues that I've faced is that, um, when it comes to drafting, uh, I draft for myself, right? Like just to, to learn and have fun and because I love it. Um, and, but also, um, I do need to do draft videos, you know, for, for CFB and stuff like that. Oh, I'm not having LSV Skype in. (laughs) 
No way. <laughs> yeah. G Graham says I'm I'm up later basic than basically anybody else um, because it's the time when he's up also. Graham and I have three in the morning text messages sometimes and neither of us thinks twice about f firing off a text at that time because we're just always seems to be uh, awake. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so maybe maybe I'll do it. I don't know. I The thing is, you guys know, like when I do something, I like to try to do it for real, to try to do it right. And, you know, it's like, I just don't want to get in there and do it every once in a while and say I'm going to do it and then just find out that I'm kind of halfway doing it. You know, that's just, I don't know. To me, that's just kind of lame, I guess. Oh, I'd have Graham Skype in all day. Not Luis, though. Have you ever seen him Skype in to Gian's <laughs> stream? Oh, man. It's like it's like a glimpse of what my life is like <laughs> when I'm not doing this stuff. But Oh, yeah, Graham could come on for sure. That would be really fun. In fact, did you guys catch the one that um, they were streaming from the hotel when we were at the GP in Vancouver? And then I just like popped in randomly and we drafted this sweet deck. It was really fun. We won the draft too. Oh, I would Skype into Luis's all day. And, and, and of course, I'm kidding. I, I totally have him come on, but – um, but yeah, he's such a troll. Like he <laughs> makes it so much harder. <laughs> All right. So Graham says he could be convinced. So that's good. I, I, I can convince him. I'm confident. Yeah. LSV is a great part of Chion's stream. I agree. I, I'm obviously, but yeah, that hotel draft was insane. Yeah. I like the Graham and Marshall power hour. Uh, that was on Loading Ready Run's channel, I believe. <laughs> so the guy, so kind of funny. So tonight's um, a night when I normally play poker, and uh, you know, because you guys know I do that for for part of my living and. Um, and so tonight's a night when I play a home game, um, with a bunch of friends and magic players too, but we also play for, for money and the, uh, and they, they were apparently fired up the stream because I couldn't make it tonight. And now they're texting me saying, why am I not on the way down? <laughs> now they're angry. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh yeah. And it was on James's brand new laptop, right? Remember he had like just unwrapped that thing. That thing is a beast by the way. Head up to Victoria for Desert Bus. Yeah, maybe. I, I love watching Desert Bus, so I always keep up on it and try to contribute whenever I can. Um, oh, and I, and I mentioned it earlier, but for those of you guys that didn't see, I thought this would be a fun time I'm going to mention on the show, but these things are real now. Uh, these limited resources shirts exist. I got this cool little thing here for them. It's just kind of like a fun, you know, so you don't have a scratchy thing. And if you order one, they're uh, they're twelve bucks or eleven ninety nine. You get a sticker and one of these little these little LR pins too, um, just thrown in. I had those things made just because I thought it would be kind of a cool add on to have. Um, uh oh, MB. Uh oh. Um, anyway, and you can find those on Channel Fireball now. Um, I've been. It took me a really long time to get those stupid things made. It turns out getting a shirt made is a lot harder than. I thought it shouldn't be that hard. Like you can go to one of the websites that kind of does it for you, but I wanted to do it like a certain way. You know how picky I am. And so, yeah, here they are and you can get them. They're, they're 12 bucks. Like I said, and they go from small to, um, double XL, but people have been asking for those for a while. So I was pretty cool. Pretty happy to be able to, to make that happen. James has a local recording. Dear God. Um, you know, I'm actually going to eat dinner. So I, w I w actually would play standard. I I'll show you guys, or actually it's on my other account, but, um, I've been playing the list that channel fireball played for Esper at the PT. Um, how much of the 12 goes to me? Uh, not much. I mean, I'm not trying to make a killing on the things. I'm just, I, it, it was just cause a lot of people asked for them and I thought it would be cool to make. So I made them, um, but I'm not, you know, 
I mean, as you can imagine, the, they, they do cost a bit per, so I'm not exactly, you know, building a house off of those things, but whatever it's, it was more for, like I said, because people wanted them, but, um, anyway, um, I can't remember what I was saying, but it's not that relevant because I'm starving and I'm going to have dinner now. Um, but thanks for hanging out guys. Um, it was really fun. And like I said, hopefully I'll find a way to stream somewhat regularly or at least just a little bit more often. Um, but anyway, yeah, thanks for hanging out guys. We'll see you next time.